this is just a quick tutorial showing you how to create falling snow using the falling snow pack from Lumabox. There are four files inside the falling snow pack, three different weights and sizes of snow and snowflakes. I'm going to use the large snow, but the workflow that I'm about to show you is the same for all of these files. So um, here is the large snow that I'm going to use. So all I want to do is grab it and drag it above my log cabin facade, which I generated in Luma Map. And I can't now see my house because we have a black background. So how do we get rid of that? Well, the easiest way to do it, um, the quick win way, is to change the mode of this layer. So if you don't see this mode column, you might need to click toggle switches and change the mode from normal to screen. So that is the easiest way to make this file work and make it look like you have falling snow in your scene. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more of an advanced technique if you would like to do something like add some drop shadow to the snow because um, I, in the scene that I showed you at the beginning, I had a little bit of drop shadow just to really kind of sell the illusion that the snow is physically in the scene and um, interacting with the house and with the light um, like in inside the, inside the scene. So, um, I will need to go about things a bit differently. I won't be able to use this mode screen method straight out of the box if I want to use a drop shadow. And I'll show you why. If I right click on my snow and go to layer styles, drop shadow, I don't see anything change in the scene. And that is because the drop shadow is actually, it's actually been applied to the edges of the whole file itself. It doesn't understand that we're only interested in the white areas, the drop shadow goes onto the whole thing. So I'll just undo that and I'll change the mode back to normal just for a second. So what we want to do is actually remove these black areas. So what some of you might be thinking is you might want to use Luma key. If I, if I had my layer selected and then I can just double click it here and it gets um, applied over here on the left and you would want to set the key type to key out darker. That's correct because we want to take out these darker black areas, but um, it's not having an effect at the moment. That's because we want to drag up this threshold and very carefully just drag up the threshold so that it sort of nibbles away at the black fringes of the snowball a little more and you might want to increase edge thin a little bit. It has a big effect, so um, something like one and then bringing the threshold back down maybe a little bit, something like that. And then maybe edge feather, giving it a little bit of softness to take out that hard, hard black fringe. But this isn't looking great because to be honest, they look kind of like dirty dirty cotton balls. We don't want to see any of this kind of um, black area in here. So what we could do is once again, set the mode to screen and that's had a nice effect. And look what we have here. Our drop shadow is now visible. If I increase the distance, um, we can see that uh, we've achieved the drop shadow on each individual snowball, which is what we wanted. However, there is another way of doing what the Luma key did, which I think is a little bit subtler, a little bit better. So I'll show you now. I will just turn off the visibility of the drop shadow momentarily. And I'll also turn off the effect of the Luma key. And I'll turn the mode back to normal from screen so that we can do this again from scratch. And the other effect that I want to use, or an alternative effect, is shift channels. So I've double clicked and that's um, been applied to my layer because my layer was selected. And what I want to do is interact with this, um, this row here, take alpha from, so alpha just means transparency or how um, opaque the pixels appear. Um, so what I want to do is use the luminance in this layer. So how bright the pixels are 
black being the darkest, white being the lightest, I want to use that information to drive the alpha, to drive the transparency. So I want to take my alpha from luminance. And now we can see that all the black areas, because they were the darkest, have all become fully transparent. And look, we've been able to um, retain some of the more kind of subtler variations within the snowball. So I'll turn the mode now to screen. And I'll turn off shift channels and turn luma key back on so that you can kind of see. So I think these look a little bit, a little bit kind of choked, a little bit blobby, um, sort of solid within the snowballs themselves, whereas shift channels, I just think that's a little bit subtler and um, we're keeping a little bit of that variation and interest within each snowball and they look fluffier and softer. Great, so now back to the drop shadow, which is here under layer styles and then you can expand drop shadow to see these parameters. So I already, well, I'll turn the visibility back on. I already played with the distance and I'll increase that even more because I want to make it seem like there's quite a bit of distance between the snow falling in front of the house um, and then the shadow that is being cast by those objects. So I've increased the distance quite a lot. If you want to make the shadow a little bit softer, you could adjust the size. Um, you see I can make it really, really soft or all the way down to quite sort of crisp, harsh shadows. But I think um, three or was it five? Yeah, that looks good. And then the opacity needs to come down a lot. I think even something as subtle as 10, you might think that that's not visible anymore, but I think these snowballs are just little bits of ice and snow, you know, they'd hardly cast a shadow at all. So we want something just super, super subtle. And I think that really sells the illusion that they kind of have a physical presence in the scene and uh, cast a shadow. One more thing I wanted to show you is that if you are using the shift channels effect with the snowflakes file, you might notice that the snowflakes are looking a little bit transparent. Uh, they're not as solid as perhaps you might like. And that is because the snowflakes are actually blue. They're not solid white or fully white bright pixels uh, like, the snow, like the snowballs and the snow is. So what we can do is with the file selected, we can add the curves effect. And here next to channel, change it from RGB to alpha. So alpha remember is the transparency. And what you can do is grab the middle of this uh, line and just pull it up. And that will restore a lot of the opacity to the snowballs. If I turn it off, uh, sorry, the snowflakes, turn it off, that was them before. With the curves, that's them now. So that's an another little thing to bear in mind if you're using the snowflakes file. Great, so I like the look of those. Another thing that you might be wondering is, well, how can I make the snow fall for longer? Because with this file, the snow comes in, it falls for a while, and then it disappears. But look, I've got a longer scene than just that. I'd like the snow to fall for longer. So what you can do is select the layer, go to edit, duplicate. And now at the point where the snow is starting to make its exit, about here, I can now drag this new layer, or duplicated layer back in time so that so here it is starting to come in. So there's a little bit of overlap and it takes over from the first sort of snowfall. Now we're into the second. And you can do that as many times as you need to have snow falling for the duration of your sequence. And we're done. If you liked this video, why not hit that like button and subscribe if you don't want to miss what's coming next.